Welcome back to another tutorial from PH Studios. Last tutorial, we just gathered the screen manager files and added that to our project. And we organized it nicely to where the parent classes go in the screen manager folder, or you could just have the screen parent folder, or whatever you want to name it. And the screen implementation goes in the screens folder. And of course, the more complex the game is, you might have subfolders for like menus or play screens or level screens or something like that. So, depending on the complex of your complexity of your game, you'll have either just these basic folders or subfolders or 20 additional folders just for your screens. So now, before we begin, let me discuss a little bit about what is going on here. We have a public class screen manager. And this is a derivative of the drawable game component. And what I mean by derivative is it the it is a child class of another class. So the drawable game component is a parent, which means we get the parent data from the drawable game component in the screen manager uh, class file. And that includes the update and draw. We override those to get to the access to those virtual methods or abstract methods. And that is what we inherit those methods from this class. So what we're doing on the game screen is creating inheritable or some stuff that can be from another class that can inherit those either fields or attributes or properties or some other thing that we can access from a different class because that game screen is a parent of the class we're going to create. And we'll create an abstract because this is not going to be we're not going to have any implementation of game screen itself it's always going to be a derivative of game screen if we're going to make a actual game screen object we would use virtual for this since we can add uh, our own stuff to the virtual method so that's what's going on here. If you look at the update and draw, you see what I mean here. Let me see if I can find it. The abstract draw, we do not add any code, we just add a semicolon. In a virtual, we can add code. And then we just override that virtual method and we add additional code to a derived class. So we have virtual, we can add code to the parent class. And we override that, and then we add more code to it. And then to get to the parent class, we have base dot whatever. As you see in the game one dot CS, we have a lot of that base dot update or base dot draw. Those go to the parent class and actually load those methods and actually perform the operations inside of the parent class. So if we can just skip these if we want, but if we want to actually do those, we need base dot update and base dot draw and base dot remove and stuff like that to actually perform the operations inside of the methods in the parent class. All right. So now that being said, let's go ahead and make a derivative of game screen that we can actually use and actually be something useful so in this tutorial I'm going to cover an introduction or an intro screen it'll just be a screen that fades on shows you a logo or text for the tutorial I'm going to focus on logo and then fades away and then loads a different uh, game screen so we need a parent and to do that we right click the screen manager folder or whatever you name it wherever you have the parent classes go to add class and let's call it intro screen
Now be careful here. I mentioned this in a previous tutorial, but I'll mention it here. If you do not want to add more using statements, you need all namespaces to be equal. However, if they're not equal, you need to add using statements to get to those classes. So just to keep it simple, I just make all namespaces equal. Now, we're going to have a public class intro screen, and that's going to be a derivative of game screen. And now it's happy, we need to implement abstract class data, and that will just add our draw method. And just because I don't like seeing all those dots, I delete Microsoft.xnet.framework dot, just leaving game time, game time. And then we just need the using Microsoft.xnet.framework up top. And let's delete the throw new exception line. Alright. So here we just want a intro screen that draws a simple texture which is a logo and it will fade in and out now the way to create fade is just to have a single texture that is just a single pixel and extend that throughout the entire game window and then set that to a black color or red color whatever color you want the fade color to be and then set the fade opacity to a certain amount so first things first, let's worry about the attributes and properties. We need to create a region. And what we need to do now is create a texture 2D object. And we need to add the Microsoft.xnet.framework.graphics line at the top. And I just call that texture. You can call that logo or anything else you like, but I like to call it texture. Now we need a property for that, and that needs to be public access, same return type, capital texture. return lowercase texture set texture is equal to value by the way some issues I've encountered with people asking me questions regarding uh, tutorials I've done in the past are they would get like stack overflow errors or something like that you need to get the object itself and set the object itself. You do not want to get the property and set the property because you'll get an infinite loop. So if you do capital T for texture and capital T for texture in both get and set, it'll create an infinite loop because that's getting the texture property. So it's going to the texture property and it's going to the get property. So it's going back to the texture property, so it's creating an infinite loop need to get to the object which is a lowercase t now if you don't like doing that you can name the object something else and name the property something else like texture property or something to completely separate themselves but for me I like capital T and lowercase t so now let's worry about the fading pixel that we will use and that's just going to be a single pixel then we will extend over the entire game window and we will modify the color values and modify the how much it expands later on but but before we 